Hey guys, welcome back. So over the last six months or so, I've been like so on top of my repotting, but I feel like I just took my eye off the prize for a second, got a little bit distracted with other stuff and I blinked and I'm behind on repots again. So I was looking through my repot list. I usually have like a note in my phone. When I think of a plant I wanna repot, I just add to it. And when I have enough, I do a repot session. And that list was getting alarmingly long. So I spent like 30, 45 minutes kind of going through my plant room, checking on roots and seeing who's ready to be repot, who's kind of urgent. And I just want to get it done today. They're all anthuriums and a lot of them are like seedlings. A lot of them are props. I have a couple of bigger ones and I might also chop one of them because I'm kind of also behind on propagating as well because I don't have that many props going. So that is literally the video. It is pouring rain outside. We've had a good amount of sun in the last week, but today just feels like cozy, hunker down and just do something very quiet and calm. I was um, almost not gonna film. I was planning today to be a filming day and then um, just like had a stressful morning and I was just like raging. I was venting to Charmaine and I was like, now I don't even feel like filming, but the whole day is uh, like a write-off if I don't film. And she's like, wow, well, yeah, you shouldn't rage film. And I was like, well, I could rage film. Doesn't sound too bad. And also <laughs> the alternative, cause like I can't just not do anything today. So I was like, oh, you could do your taxes. And then the other part of my way, I was like, no, no, let's film. Let's film. So I have a total of 12 plants I need to repot. The majority of them are to get into bigger pots so they can continue upsizing because like a lot of them are like little tiny baby seedlings and if I don't get them into a bigger pot, they're going to kind of slow down on the upsize. So we're going to do the big pot method for a lot of them. So for those of you who are new, the big pot method, I don't even know what to call it, the bucket method. It's, it's basically for anthuriums, sizing it up like a lot more than you would in any other genus, like a philodendron or a Hoya, especially alocasia, you upsize that pot pretty drastically. So it kind of looks a little bit silly for a bit, but then the upsize of the leaf after that should be pretty impressive. So as usual, I'm gonna show you the plant one by one before we get repotting. I have a good amount of seedlings. So I'm gonna start with those first. This first one, I am so excited to just get going over spring. Right now it's planted in tree fern, amended with lechuza pond. This one was a gift from my friend Jose for Christmas. So this is a Port Sherman Ralph Lynam crossed with a Carla dress. And this leaf is so interesting. Like it has a completely flat sinus and it's so elongated. And I'm just very like, who's who are we taking after? Is this is just like Port Sherman Ralph Lynam, but it has a very interesting kind of pebbly texture. So this one's gonna get put into a bigger pot and it's gonna go from tree fern to tree fern soil. Actually, everything today is gonna go into tree fern soil. This next one's not a seedling, it's a little baby prop. This is red crystal port, which I got from Charmaine. So we each have a red crystal port, but they're different specimens within the same seed batch. So this one hasn't rooted a ton, but I just think that in a bigger pot with drainage, I think it will kind of get going faster. Who knows, but this one already is in tree fern soil, so it's not gonna be much of a transition. It's probably gonna be really fast. Same goes for this um, Woohoo's First Night. This is the newest leaf on it, it's so cute. But this one would have been like the base of the cutting, like the base of the plant, the very butt of the plant. So that's why it looks so baby. Whereas something else I'll show you later, It's it came from like a higher up part of the stem is more like a mid cut and the first leaf is a lot more mature. So these little butt cuts are definitely an exercise in patience, but this one has been growing a little bit faster, but I don't see as many roots. Like I don't see anything in terms of new roots, just what was existing on the plant from before, but it is actively pushing a leaf right now. Um, so same thing, going to slightly bigger pot. This one is one of my oldest seedlings and it's just languishing in like babyhood. So this one is a Zara Michelle and this one was purchased and I don't even know who the seller was, but this was purchased like, oh my gosh, almost two years ago. And I'm pretty sure this is a runt. And I got a plant from this batch when it first came up as like a little one leaf seedling and that one just did not, did not survive. Same goes for Charmaine's. And I don't know if Jing got one. 
or not, but a lot of the plants from the seed batch were not very healthy. <laughs> and I do think that this is one of them because Jesse got another one from the seed batch and his is flowering size, it's huge. So I'm not really sure if there's like much to do for this plant, but I am going to get it into like a proper um, orchid pot that's right now is just in a yogurt cup. It's in tree fern. So maybe the added nutrition from tree fern soil will help. It is actively growing a leaf. It's probably going to be slightly bigger than this one. It is slightly upsizing, but it grows really slow and it just has kind of like a sickly look, you know? So if you ever get a seedling grown from seed and it's just not doing well for you, like it's not definitely your conditions or your fault or your care. It can just be something like this. And I don't relinquish all responsibility for the way this grows, but I want to do my best. So if it still doesn't grow after that, I can kind of safely say it's never going to be the biggest, most healthy, robust specimen ever. But I do really like it because it does have really nice purple emergent leaves. This one's pretty much fully hardened, so you won't see, but no, you won't really be able to see it on this leaf either until it fully opens. Yeah, so bigger pot. I forgot to say that one was a gift from my friend Anna. This one is also a gift from my friend Anna. So this one is not, it's not the grass. This one is a blue velvet, so it buries blue velvet crossed with a crystallinum. So this leaf is already, oh my gosh, it's dripping everywhere. This leaf is already really crystally. And right now it's in moss. So I'm basically, this is a rescue mission from moss and getting it into tree fern soil. It's probably gonna go into like the, not the mini square pot, but the small one. This one actually has reanimated moss in there and I would love to keep that going if possible. So I'm probably gonna just put that reanimated moss aside. And <laughs> there's like roots escaping the bottom. <laughs> These are the roots from this grass, <laughs> which if you guys didn't know, if you break this grass or just like, rub it between your fingers and you smell it, it actually smells just like cucumbers. It's a very nice smell. But yeah, hopefully you can see that cute reanimated moss there. Two other seedlings I got around Christmas time. This one was from Lauren. This is a Magnificum crossed with Ralph Lynam Fort Sherman. And it's starting to look so pappy-like. Just a little bit greener and a little bit more veiny, but it definitely has a pappy shape. And I'm hoping that the mag jeans means that it's gonna size up really robustly. At one point, it did put out a variegated leaf. I don't know if you can see right there, there's that like splash of variegation on the corner, but it hasn't persisted because the leaf after that is full green and the newest leaf is full green. So this one's gonna go into next size pot. I'm not gonna do anything crazy. So like with the bu bucket method, like you could literally take this, provided your substrate is amended enough and airy enough, put it straight into this pot. So this is two sizes up. This, that would work, but if you're just starting the bucket method, I would just do it like more frequently, like more frequent that you would do in a philodendron, but just upsize to the next size up. So it doesn't feel as daunting, but as soon as I see like roots escaping a little bit, I don't need it to be fully root bound. I, as soon as I feel like the pot is pretty full, on it goes to the next one. And I'll show you a different plant later where it's actually showing me signs that it wants to be in a big pot and it's actually not happy in that pot. Another one that's from Lauren, this one is um, Lauren and Charmaine's parent plants. So this one is Hoff Red Crystal. So Hoff X or what they call Indo Dressleri crossed with Red Crystallinum. And this one is so cute. It looks so Red Crystallinum-y, just minus the red. It is very, very Red Crystal in the venation in the shape. It doesn't look muted at all like the Indo Dress Hoff X. This one is also actively pushing a leaf and it's going into the next size square pot. I repotted this from like the mini mini pot probably like two months ago. So we're just trying to keep it going so it keeps upsizing over and over again and it's not going to be a substrate change. This one and the Mag Ralph Lynam Fort Sherman already were in tree fern soil. The roots are starting to escape the bottom. There's one escaping out this drainage hole as well. This one is so cute. Both of these are getting too much light, by the way. You can really see it in the, this one where it's getting a little bit chlorotic. So the goal is to get them out of the prop box that they're in and back into my tent. I've moved things around a little bit, but the prop box is a lot closer to the light and it's a stronger light. It's a T8 that's going on the prop box. These ones in here are T5s. So that is all the seedlings. This one is what I was talking about earlier. So this one is an X1 
cross with an X1. So X1 is just like a Indo Pappy hybrid that's really cool. It has like very, very dark, very elongated, but it has like orangey veins. You'll see it especially close to the sinus and it's so pretty. So this one was a prop I got from Jing and it is, it's been growing so fast. She probably cut this in, I want to say January. And then they started rooting and growing immediately. And then when she gave this to me, it only had an emergent leaf. This one is still soft. It hasn't fully hardened yet. It's already popped the next one. It hasn't grown any new roots, but I want to get it into like a actual plant pot rather than this, because this one takes up too much horizontal space. So real estate is very limited in my tent. This thing is so cute though. Like I just love that texture. I'll show you the mother plant that it was cut from. It is so pretty. And I'm trying to remember, I'm pretty sure this plant originally came from Space Hijau, who produces some really pretty um, Indonesian hybrids. But this one's already in tree fern soil, so it's obviously super happy in that. And the next three are bigger plants. This one is Carla Bivep. Um, not my original Carla Bivep. This one is from Woohoo Tropicals. So this one I would like to get a cutting from if possible for Charmaine. So this one was grown from seed, so it probably has a decent amount of stem below the substrate. This one is planted in tree fern soil and it has a pond layer at the bottom rather than Leka. I don't remember why I did that. And I think it might have been because I was out of Leka. I'm not sure. But this one's going into the next size pot. It has rooted really well. I don't think it's been that long since I potted this. Maybe like three months. But this leaf is... Oh, you know what? Maybe I can't chop it. Or can I? It would definitely mean sacrificing this newest leaf. Because it is really soft. So if I were to chop this, it would... This leaf would be so deflated, it will do that like seaweed crisp thing. So maybe not. We'll get it out and see, but either way, it's pretty root bound now. So this is kind of like prime ready for a repot. Any more than this, I would say I'd be like really overdue. This is veering on overdue for me now. And the pond transition, I'm gonna get this one out of pond into tree fern soil. This is so sad. <laughs> oh, I had so many hopes and dreams for you. Let me take this bag off. So this one is my Forgetii grown from seed. This was one of the plants I held back from like my Forgetii cross. So it's like a almost fully dark Forgetii cross with a dark Forgetii. And you can see that the new leaf, this is fully hardened now, smaller than the others. It is very rooty in here. And for a while I was getting some of this stuff happening because it was in the very back of my tent. I'd forget about it, it'd be bone dry. I would see these leaves wilting and I'd I'd water it, come back. Um, so I'm getting into tree burn soil so I have less like kind of um, violent fluctuations of moisture in the substrate. It also is like very high up. Like there's so much stem to cover. So I don't know, I might, I might chop this, but I'm just, I'm a little bit sad that I kind of let it get to this point. It's looking kind of pale too, because this plant normally is quite dark. It's getting a little bit pale. I believe this is because of like nutrient deficiency, but this plant once upon a time was so cute because the leaves are so bumpy and it's so circular. As far as forgetty eyes go, they're more on the round side. So that one should just transition fine to tree burn soil. I have no fear that it's not going to take well to the transition. I find that anthuriums in general are just really easy going with like substrate changes. Like, if I were to transition a Hoya from moss to soil or pond, it would just, like, those roots that were existing in the moss are pretty much, like, toast. But when it comes to anthuriums, I find that, like, it doesn't really matter. Moss to water to soil to pond, it's all the same. Leka, fine. And I'm saying this because I don't have transplant shock with anthuriums, especially in in relation to like changing substrates and I don't know if it's something to do with like I have organic media in pond, organic media in my soil obviously, but I'm really curious to know. So if you have any like experience to share, let me know um, in the comments because I like, let's just say like if you were transitioning a plant from straight lechuza pond or like a straight mineral matter to soil, like how have you been finding that with anthurium specifically? I know other genera might respond not as well as anthuriums, but in my experience, anthuriums are pretty easy going when you're changing substrates. And the last one is the one I am the most nervous about. So this one is, is my ace of spades. 
and it's um, definitely in need of a repot. So ever since I got into Traver and Soil and started getting into bigger pot, it's been sizing up pretty reliably. So when I got it into this pot, it was kind of like around this size. And then the next leaf it pushed out was this, which was just wonderful. And then immediately after that, it started pushing this one out of the petiole. And then this one, I think, is the first caterpillar leaf. And it's been hardened off for a little while now. I would probably say like two weeks. And I just peel back the old sheath to check on the caterpillar, and it's not really moving yet, which tells me that it's starting to slow down. And even the newest leaf is not a big upsize from the one before it. I think it's marginal. So this one is telling me that it doesn't have enough room in this pot. So I'm going to get into the biggest orchid pot I have. Still in tree fern soil with Leka at the bottom, which reminds me my Leka is downstairs. So that is the last plant. I will try to take a cutting of this if I can. I don't know how well these prop, but Charmaine cut hers and it worked for her. So I'm going to use that as a sign to say that I should chop my ace. So yeah, I haven't repotted in this room. I don't even know for how long. And I don't have like a setup I'm, I'm loving so <laughs> background's gonna probably change a little bit i still need to workshop like a table setup lighting that i like so um be right back we're back on the floor <laughs> so i tried to rig something so i could use a little table and sit on a chair rather than sitting on the floor and it looked like such crap that we're back on the floor i also had to run downstairs to get my leka i hope this isn't enough i i really don't want to go <laughs> deeper downstairs to get like Lekka from my big Lekka bag. So this is like hodgepodge Lekka I have saved from past repots. I really need to exercise more. I'm also gonna have to like rig together a potting surface because I can't use my table. I really hope that this surface is big enough for repotting on. With the exception of the ace, everything is pretty small so it sh should be fine um also i have made the decision not to repot this because i just don't want to repot it into a bigger pot without being able to cut it because i really do want to cut it for charmaine because it's so pretty it actually looks prettier in this lighting than it did before and since this leaf is so floppy it's not going to survive the chop so i'm just going to wait for it to fully harden and then i'm going to take a chop for charmaine so instead Here's a plant that I forgot about. This is a Bessier Ave stump that I got from Jose. So he just gave this to me before he left the country to move to Australia. It does have roots. I don't know how they are. It's potted in tree fern and coarse perlite. And um, the top, the top is dead. I know there's firm stem below it. I just want to get it fully out of the substrate and reassess and probably get it back into tree fern soil. Maybe not back into, just get it into tree fern soil because that has been doing wonders for a lot of my stumps. So this one, I, he knew I wanted a Bessier AF. I don't know what it looks like. I want like a very kind of, I'm kind of specific about what I want in a Bessier AF. I want super dark. I want... If I, I, I mean, ideally I want the flat sinus one, but that is a one in a million. I'm never going to get one. So the alternative is I want one that's very like almond shaped, like kind of narrower at the top, kind of swells in the middle and just has like a really elegant shape. I'm not really looking for a wide sinus. I'm just looking for either flat sinus or really beautiful almondy, dark with like clean veins. I asked him if he had a picture of the mother plant and he's just like, nope. But trust me, it was really nice. And I, if there's one thing I trust about Jose is that he has really good taste. So I really want to rescue this and make sure that it grows again. Let us start with the little babies, I think. I'm going to get this one over with and I'm the most nervous about the Ralph Lynham. No, Fort Sherman Ralph Lynham cross with Dress Carla. Now I have to decide if I want to put it into this pot. Yeah, I think so this pot. I was almost gonna go for this pot. That's boat mode. That's what Jesse would do. I, I'm not feeling that confident with this one, so I'm gonna do this one. I usually repot into like, um, or like use metal bowls to repot with to get all the substrate, but I'm also aware that those make the most atrocious noise. So I'm gonna be repotting onto here and then scooping the substrate away. So those roots aren't massive on this. Oop. Less. Oop. 
is just like that. So, and actually, no, I like that. I like this fit more and more now. That should be good. So whenever I repot my anthuriums into bigger pots, I also have to make myself aware that that's going to take up more room. And that means that I can't stop purging plants either. Right now, it's kind of a little bit stressful because I don't have that many props going. So it's not just like wait for a plant to grow so it's ready to go and live with its next owner. It's most of these plants are mine and it's getting harder and harder to pick plants to purge. Because <laughs> before, like maybe if you asked me like a year ago, when I wanted to make room in my collection, <laughs> I would just like, oh, easy. I'll just get rid of a skindapsis or a syngonium. Like, you know, those plants that I already no, I don't jive with anymore. But now I'm like, they're all plants that would actually be kind of painful to let go of. So the edits that I have to make to my collection now are getting more and more difficult. So I wouldn't recommend boat mode for your entire collection if your collection is already veering on the side of like kind of taking up too much space in your house because they're only gonna get even bigger quicker after that especially if you're using like tree fern soil you're giving them all the nutrients and you're upsizing the pot and it's springtime <laughs> just be careful like don't do it to everything because it will soon become very overwhelming i don't even know if you guys are close enough i don't think you're close enough is that better maybe oh gosh my great white is downstairs <sighs> Living in a house with stairs, you get used to it, right? But like when I first moved here, it I found it so exhausting because we moved from the tiniest. It was like barely the size of a studio. Um, it was us two plus two dogs in like a five, not even 600 square foot apartment. So I was so happy to move here. And then I realized that stairs means that like whenever you go up to bed at night, you have to take stock of everything you need for your destination. Like, do I have everything? Do I have my water? Do I have my phone? It's almost like you're checking your passport before you go to the airport. That was something to get used to, but over time, I'm less tired by going up and down the stairs, especially I have to go down to flights to do laundry, come back to flights to empty my laundry. But when you're in the middle of filming, it's not so fun. Oh wait, I forgot to show you. This one is done. It doesn't look too tiny in this pot, so it probably won't have to live in this for very long. I think when it gets to the size of this one here, it'll be time to move out. And I'm gonna just pop all the new plants, like new transplants in here because it's kind of like my saucer because I'm gonna great white them all and give them a nice good drink because my substrate right now is very dry. Okay, let's do this little moss guy next. I don't know how I feel about filming in here. Like I really wanted to be able to film in here because like it's private. Oh gosh. This is really soaking wet. It's private and I can just kind of make a mess however I want because it's just like my plant stuff and I wanted to kind of keep it, keep out of the kitchen because it's like so big in there and it's so spacious. I just really like repotting in my kitchen and since we're converting a lot of stuff, like we converted the side where I used to store a lot of my plant stuff, um, my there's still some plant stuff there. Look how tiny this is. Teeny tiny roots. There's still some plant stuff there, but a lot of it has moved up here with the intention that it's going to all be stored up here at some point. But it this honestly feels very tight. Like I barely have room to move. So another project I'm going to have to work on this year is to try to redo this space. Cause I also have a desk in here that maybe could be like half the size and that will open up more space for shelving that I could store substrate on. I probably should have shown you my substrate before we started repotting. Um, I didn't, was not prepared. This, trying not to spill it, is my tree fern soil. And I honestly should just make a video dedicated to this mix and like maybe how I pot it up and how I water it because that's 
fast becoming the most frequent question I get and I'll get people DMing me and stuff and I I have it all in a video somewhere but like my videos are long and they'll be talked about in a video that's like not obviously about tree fern soil except for that one video that says um, I found my new favorite substrate. That's the one I feel like most people are referring to or like telling people to watch when people ask about tree fern soil. But um, it's basically, so there's tree fern fiber, um, peat based potting mix. So right now I'm using the HP Pro Mix, HP High Porosity Myco mix, which has a lot of fine perlite in it. It has fir bark. I'm using repti bark right now. I don't use orchiata in my soil. I just feel like it'll just get lost in there. The orchiata that I have is too too small and I like to use it for pond mostly just to introduce some organic matter in there. Um, coarse perlite which I add to even coarsen up the really fine perlite that's already in the soil. Sometimes I'll have like bits of lechuza pond in there because I'll be pulling tree fern from my tree fern bin, which I always keep mixed with lechuza pond and perlite. But if I were to break it down to like what is necessary for a tree fern soil mix, tree fern fiber obviously, some sort of soil. I'm, I'm more fond of peat mix for some reason versus cocoa. And I think part of it is because when I first started to get like very heavily into plants, um, everything that I was reading about, watching on YouTube was like, make it as chunky as possible. And a lot of people were um, recommending like a coconut based soil, like a soilless soil. So I had very big chunks of coconut, big, big chunks of bark. I had like charcoal chunks, perlite, and it was like mostly chunk. And my plants, that was, it was not, they weren't growing. Like they, forget about growing and upsizing, like my anthuriums did not grow. So I kind of associate cocoa with that era. I'm slowly warming back to coconut, but right now I'm still in like my peat soil era. Okay, this one is done. These, these little repots, like these are my favorite to do just at a desk, earphones in, listening to a podcast, or like listening to someone else play video games just in the background while I just like swirl around in my thoughts. It's so peaceful. This is like my favorite size of plant to repot. Get some great white. Let's do Hoff, Hoff Red Crystal. Oh wait, what am I gonna do with this moss? Okay, I'm gonna just pull this grass off and I wanna smell it to see if it still smells like cucumbers. No, I think I have to break it. This one doesn't smell like cucumbers. It just smells like grass. The heck, you've changed. But what to do with this reanimated moss? Oh, <gasps> you know what I could do. You know what I could do. I just got my, no, my second pinguicula. The first ping I ever had, um, I got it from Jing and I underwatered it. I had it in my Hoya cabinet and um, it died but I got a new one. I haven't shown it to you guys yet. I got it from this shop and they have it potted in fluval. And I'm thinking maybe I want to get it onto like a lava rock, like make a nice cute little range room with it and also grow the reanimated moss on the lava rock because it would be kind of like a semi-hydro situation. This kind of moss like has to be wet all the time in order to survive and it needs quite a lot of light. So it's very likely that it might not survive, but as long as the ping survives, it's that'll be good. I don't know anything about ping care. <laughs> I've been watering it with Brita water just in case. I, I'm I'm not about to buy or distill my own um, water. So if it can survive on Brita water, then that's great. Maybe I'll show it to you guys one day. Okay, back to the Hoff. This one should have a good amount of roots, I think. Be very careful because it does have a new leaf emerging. Great. I probably... Is there a Leca down here? I didn't even do a Leca layer on that one. Interesting. Okay, well, I'm not gonna... I'm not going to mess with the roots because they look fine. Yeah, they seem super healthy, so I'm gonna just get a Leca layer in the bigger pot and just plop it straight in. Ah...
So since it's spring now, it's kind of officially import season or like, you know, people don't stop importing in the winter time, but a lot of uh, exporters won't ship in the winter. So I'm wondering, are you guys importing this, this spring, summer? And if so, what are you ordering? Because I, I feel like the popularity of the tropicals, equigenera imports have started to kind of like die down because like they, they kind of show a lot of similar stuff all the time with the exception of equigenera because they're always like naming their new hybrids, like naming the whole batch, which it I honestly still confuses me. Like I don't even know all the names cause I'm not really like importing from equigenera, not for any particular reason, but I just like, I kind of, I'm not really importing anyways. And it's a lot easier for me to import from tropicals. And I have better experience with tropicals in the way they package versus Equigenera. I feel like I'm really out of the loop with what Equigenera has, but the naming of entire batches really confuses me because maybe somebody can answer this question I have. So like, let's say they cross like Crystallinum with Uraquianum name that whole batch um, Ecuadorian dream. Would they name every single Crystal Warhawk batch after that Ecuadorian dream? Or is it just that batch? Because I know they don't really single out um, uh, specific specimens and call it one thing and then only propagate from that one specimen. I don't think that's how they have been operating. Anyways, I'm just a little bit out of the loop with the importing from Ecuador stuff. Tropicals is sending up a shipment in, I think a week or so. Yeah, next week. And me and Charmaine are gonna help kind of acclimate those things, pot them up. I love import days, I honestly do, but there hasn't been a lot of stuff that like I really want. Granted, I don't really join their live sale. So I, I bet you if I went to their live sale, I probably would find stuff because they show like really nice specimens. And I, I, I don't like to import big plants, but it's really hard to say no when you see such a like magnificent, majestic specimen. Just make sure all the pockets are filled. All I can think about right now is a hot cross bun. <laughs> it's Easter weekend coming up. Am I, okay. My boyfriend is British, so he loves hot cross buns. And every year we have to get hot cross buns around Easter because that's like the only time that some bakeries will do it. But then we make bread now, right? So I just want to shout out to my boyfriend for making these hot cross buns. They were, they came out perfectly. And it was like the second loaf of, not loaf, second bread he'd ever made. And I had one this morning toasted with butter and it was just so good. The texture was perfect. Um, if you guys are baking, have you ever tried like baking with tangzhong? So it's basically like you make a roux of flour and water or flour and milk, but it's not like a, a traditional roux that's made with butter. And then you add it to your um, dough and Apparently, I don't really know that much about it, but apparently that's supposed to help with the gluten structure. It makes the bread taste um, less stale or it doesn't stale as quickly as without the tangzhong, but it produces those like really like, like the Asian bread that's really like kind of milky, super soft, airy, and like not dry airy, but like just nice airy. And obviously I grew up on Asian bread and I just freaking love Asian bread. So yeah, very proud of him for producing that magnificent tray of hot cross buns. And now that's all I'm thinking about. Cause also I can hear the rain. I don't know if you can hear the rain, but it's really coming down out there. Just like I hear the gutter with the raindrops and it just feels like a cozy tea and hot cross bun day. Oh, I'm doing the Meg Ralph Lyon and Fort Sherman now. This one I also didn't do a deco layer. Interesting. I remember potting this up. It was off camera. And I remember doing it in my kitchen and I'm not sure why. Oh, I think probably because I didn't plan on sitting it in a reservoir. It was just sitting in my prop box. In any case, it's also going into... Is this okay? It's not very boat modey of me. This is just a regular upsize. 
but it doesn't have like hella roots. It's only like that. So I think that'll be okay. But anyway, back to importing. If I were to import, and I probably will be regretting this, regretting not importing anything this time from Tropicals, but if I were to import anything, it'd probably be another crystallinum, like a straight up crystallinum. Um, not like one of the silver specials, not something cross of the mag. I I probably need to see it in a live sale and claim it that way because like crystals to me don't get old. And Charmaine did import a crystallinum. I don't know. If she, I think she just ordered it off the order form, to be honest. When I see that crystallinum, I'm going to be like, damn it, I should have imported one. But you know what? Crystallinums get huge and I don't think I have the space. I'd have to probably get rid of two plants in order to import a crystal. And I, and part of it is because I'm looking at it right now. My crystal black from Tropicals, which I feel like is just like a straight up crystallinum. Like I think it's just like an ultra black kind of very dark bash that they ended up breeding. It has been kind of not that healthy for the longest time but now that it's in tree fern soil it's been doing better it's pushing a leaf right now i have a feeling that once that one kind of comes back that will really scratch the new crystal itch for me because i love that plant i've had that plant for so long and i've never been able to grow it very big because i've never given it optimal conditions other than when it once upon a time lived in my tent but that spreading of the, the petioles just meant it couldn't live in there anymore because it was taking up so much space. But that's not to say that when I go to import day, I might not accidentally pick up a plant. I really hope I don't, but there was a plant. Um, I'll hopefully be able to film something in and around import day, but there was a plant that I recommended that Lauren bring in. And I have a feeling that when I see it, I might not be able to say no to it. Okay, it's an Alaphoglossum. What is, oh, Alaphoglossum lanceolatum. This is the plant. And I've been seeing one on Marketplace for a few weeks. I don't know if it's there anymore. It probably isn't, but someone had like an established one and they were selling it for like 50 bucks, I think. And I was really, really tempted to get it because it's so cute. It's like, it feels like, Microsorum thailandicum, but like spindlier, but it has that like really wiry, thick leaf, waxy, blue toned oil shift. I don't know. I might be interested in getting that one. And also because those little ferns or those, they're not, maybe not little, but those ferns really don't take up that much space and they don't kind of overrun your shelf or whatever really quickly. Cause I have my Olaphoglossum uh, metallicum right here. It's not really growing. It looks like it's tried to put out two fronds and it, it just gets stuck in time and then it produces another frond. I don't know, I think I might have to give it more light. Okay, now she's done. All done. Give it some great wood. Come on, mix back in. I, I don't actually think that like the really dark stuff that settles is necessarily the my myco. I think it might be the carrier. So like once you dissolve it in water, I'm pretty sure it's all like already suspended. I'm pretty sure. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong though. Let's do Zara Michelle. So this one is actually a Zara F2 crossed with a Michelle F3. Let's get you in a proper pot. Oh, that's dry. Oh, that's dry. Uh oh, eesh. Any dry rot? It does not appear to be dry rot. I think maybe it was like a day being dry, which I'm sure it's going to appreciate a bigger pot at this point. And let's do, this is not boat mode, but since this is kind of like a little bit runty, I think this will be fine, right? Because what's the alternative? If it was a very healthy seedling, I could do that, but I think I'm gonna stick with this one. Also, just to be clear, um, I don't, I don't fault the seller or anything for selling a runty plant because this was sold as germinated seeds and everything appeared to be exactly the same. It had grown one leaf. The same would have been for Jesse's specimen. So some just took off, some didn't. And that's the, the, the trade-off, I guess, for paying really low price for a germinated seed versus a smaller plant. Because if it was to get to this size, 
and be sold it would obviously be more money so i don't fault anybody for that like there's it's not anna's fault it's not the seller's fault it's why some sellers refuse to sell germinated seeds i don't really have a strong opinion one way or the other but it's i guess whatever guarantee you want to give as a seller as more and more people are buying seeds you know like if somebody had a like bought a seed that was germinated so it had like growth visible growth coming out of it and it was sold at a fraction of the price of an, an established plant to me i feel like that that transaction is is complete um and the risk that you're taking on as a buyer is that it might not grow that well sometimes seeds will germinate and then they'll just stop growing like it's done the same happened to one of my seedlings i had two of the same plant so I got, I got two seeds from that same batch both appeared to be germinated and then one turned into a plant and one just never resumed it just like started and then it's like no not gonna do it if that ever happened I wouldn't feel like I could reach out to seller and say um this thing didn't grow unless the seller gave like a some sort of guarantee but usually that kind of guarantee doesn't exist for seed sales. It's kind of like a win-win in a way for the seller and the buyer because the seller gets to kind of recoup some expenses or whatever quicker rather than waiting months and months and months for them to grow out. And the buyer gets like a really, really discounted rate for a seed um, of a plant that maybe in some cases they can know exactly what it might turn out to depending on what the uh, what species it was or what hybrid it is but oftentimes it's a little bit of a gamble on what it might look like especially if it's like a very complex cross but the gamble is also part of the fun because you know you never know you might get a variegated plant or you might get like a really fun funky mutation and the same is the gamble for the seller you might be giving away a variegated um, anthurium for very cheap so it's gambles all around okay this one is done so she looks like now I don't have high hopes for it to be honest but you know she's trying she's growing oh no I'm out of great white dang it. it means I have to get up again okay I'm back I think I think it is time to tidy up my work surface let me take these weeds out though all right who's next let's do x1 oh it's so cute i just love this plant let's actually no don't know what size you're gonna go into because i don't know the size of the root mass pretty big okay let's do boat mode I mean it will look pretty ridiculous but this is a plant I do want to size up kind of aggressively and this is quite a good root system let me see if I put it into this size yeah that's pretty snug okay we're going going big back on the topic of importing um every time I hear like or I, every time I'm a part of an importing conversation or like people talking about like oh my gosh i am so covered in soil um i just look down and it's just soil people are really really looking for philodendron summer glory and i'm curious because i haven't seen any photos like and i'm mainly talking about instagram and our discord people are wanting that plant but i haven't seen anyone actually get it and i'm pretty sure it's a an equigenera hybrid and not a tropicals hybrid so let me know if anyone's gotten it yet it might simply be because like they're only just now starting to ship to north america europe um, i'm not really sure if that's the case but has anyone gotten that plant yet did it live up to your expectations i wanted to see it i don't want to own that plant um in fact i don't plan on getting a philodendron this year I really don't think I'm going to get many plants this year, but if it's going to be, if I'm going to get a plant, it's it's not going to be a philodendron, but I can appreciate their beauty. So I would actually really want to see one in person. And ideally I want to see like multiple ones and see if like there's a lot of variation because in the pictures 
to me, they're very Linamii heavy, which I, I really like Linamii. But what's the cross? It's Gloriosum Linamii, right? I feel like um, I would prefer if it was more Linamii heavy and just, I guess both plants have pink in the emergent leaves. I don't know, curious if anyone has um, has gotten one and if they, if if it's worth the hype. I guess not really hype, just the excitement for that for that cross. I don't, I don't know that philodendrons are all that hyped anymore. I certainly see philodendron and monstera sales not being quite as um, competitive and the listings I see on Facebook kind of sit there for a little bit longer. Is this too big? I just, I am getting distracted by how big this pot is. But we established that the smaller pot was a little too snug, right? Right? Is this ridiculous? <laughs> hmm. It's a little bit silly. It does look a little silly. Do I trust the process? The funny thing is, I repotted it out of this. So it would take up less space, but we're we're keeping the same footprint size. Sometimes I come into something with so much conviction and halfway through I'm like, like the same thing happened yesterday. We're redoing our front yard. The front yard is always a battle for us because we have dogs and they use it to go to the bathroom in. So you can never really have like a dog free zone that's nice, but we're trying this year. I've always dreamed of a lot of purple in my garden, clover, creeping thyme, a lot of just like, just tougher, easier going, cute little plants that are not grass, that are good for pollinators and sloping stuff. I like, I like, um, not Spanish moss, Irish moss. Um, what's the, um, I forget the, the Latin name, but the species name is either Biflorus or Uniflorus, like the little tufts of mossy looking growth. I know it's not an actual moss, but anyways, that's like the vision is there. We made a slope. <laughs> we bought like 12 bags of soil and then we made the slope and I was just like, <sighs> it's kind of weird. And that's the same feeling I have right now. Cause this looks kind of weird. I'm gonna trust my gut. I'm gonna leave it at that. I've kept it pretty low. So this is just like resting on the lip. I'm hoping that this new leaf can clear the edge of the pot. And I'm hoping that it can just live in this pot for like the next six months and I don't have to repot it anytime soon. The worst case is that it's going to um, get rot because the pot is so big, but I have good faith in this mix. And that it's like amended enough that it's not going to rot roots that readily. Um, the only thing I've been finding with tree fern soil, and I think it kind of coincides with like my new schedule being at home a lot. I'm just able to water a lot more often than I previously was. So what has been happening is that like I've I got a few bouts of root rot over the winter, and I simply think it's because like I was too like enthusiastic about watering very often that um, I just kind of overwater stuff. Cause I kind of swung one way, like from underwater to like overwater, like very, very quickly, kind of dramatically because in my mind I was just like, just give it water, who cares? Like what the harm can it do? Without even checking the weight of the pot, looking at the substrate to see if it needed water. I was just watering everything all the time, which is obviously a rookie mistake. But a lot of anthuriums didn't rot in that time. It's just like, I needed that small reality check that like you can't just grow in pure mud. Anyways, um, what is this? I'm going to have to label this because I will never remember. Okay, this one is Red Crystal Port. I got my tags ready very gently. I don't need to really undo this. There's only a small amount of new roots, which would have come from probably this, I don't know, the new stem that came out. We're gonna do this one. Happy with that. Probably reuse a lot of this substrate. It would still have some juice left in it. Is this okay? A little 
little bit higher. Like this, yep. Oh gosh. I'm in search of a new TV show to watch um, that is either on Prime, Disney Plus, or Apple TV. So we finished The Bear, we got kicked out of Netflix um, because it's not my account, and we're now watching Welcome to Wrexham, which is quite enjoyable. I don't watch football, so it's not that part that really excites me. It's, it's just like a nice heartwarming story. If you guys don't know, um, Welcome to Wrexham is about, I don't remember his partner's name. He's an actor, that's all I know. Ryan Reynolds and his partner bought Wrexham Football Club and it's it's a Welsh football club that has been like not doing very well for 15 years and this is them like rebuilding it into hopefully like being promoted up a league and just thriving as a, a team and a business and um, it has been really nice to watch and my boyfriend's Welsh so he's like been very kind of invested like invested in the success of that team and Ryan Reynolds just seems like such a nice guy. After that I'm not sure of what to watch because I'm pretty sure we're going to be done that the new season of Wrexham this week probably in like the next day or two. Do you guys watch Taskmaster? <laughs> so if you don't oh my gosh it's not a show that you can you can kind of binge watch it in a way like you could very easily watch a whole season in like a day or two because it's very fun but if you watch it every day for like a week you're gonna be like sorry it just looks like i'm pouring water on my pants i'm pouring water on, on the on the plants um <laughs> because there's not a lot of story behind it it can get kind of st not still, you need a break from it to like watch something that has like a storyline. But basically, oh, I need to make a tag. Taskmaster is created by a British comedian called Alex Horn and it's just pure chaos. So he has every season, there's like a cast and a lot of them are usually comedians. Some seasons are better than others. I will say that the earlier seasons are definitely better. Like they have just better comedians on that show. Every episode they have a series of tasks. So they enter a room, they get given an envelope and it just gives you kind of a ridiculous task and you just have to do it the best way. But the best is kind of this like ambiguous, there's no clear criteria really. Sometimes it's just like fastest wins. Sometimes it's like do it the best way. And then they come back to the, to the studio and then um, the taskmaster who is Greg Davis he watches everyone's performance of their task and he ranks them and gives them points and because they are comedians it ends up being really really funny so there is a new season coming out and all I heard is that possibly Nick Mohammed is on there and if you guys watch Ted Lasso Nick Mohammed plays Nate which I'm actually really excited about because I've seen Nick Mohammed on other things. Like I've seen him on 10, 8 out of 10 Cats Does Countdown and he's, he's mental. Like he's so funny. Anyways, I find him a very interesting person and he's a Cambridge graduate. Very smart, which if you've watched Taskmaster, you have to be really smart to either smart or um, very brazen and you don't give any Fs at all to do well at that game. Um, but if you haven't watched Taskmaster, it is it, it's a really funny, really funny show. Because Alex Horn, the creator of that show, is also bonkers. So I definitely plan on watching that when the new season starts. But, oh, slowly, 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 slowly. Um, oh, this one had a lot of roots. No wonder it was growing faster. Maybe this one can go into the bigger pot. This root seems rotten. Where the heck are my scissors? I, t I literally just had it. Here it is. Quick root check. The rest seems okay-ish. So you can kind of see on the stem how teeny tiny it is at the bottom. Um, compared to, I forgot to show you the X1 when I had it exposed, but the stem was thicker, so it would have been higher up on the plant. So the difference in the new leaves is like, this was the first leaf on this one, and the first leaf on that one. So if you're ever buying a prop, 
the stump of a seed grown one is is not going to size up as quickly so definitely something to consider and if you're selling a plant um, if you haven't grown it out yet to see what the new leaf actually will be sized like you should also price it accordingly so i personally think that a mid cut if it has roots on it and it's actively growing would be worth more than the butt cut the stump cut that was the first nodes grown from seed even though that stump cut will have more roots um, i still think the mid cut provided it has roots would be worth a little bit more because it will mature faster i'm really excited to see this one size up though because woohoo's first night is such a pretty dark anthurium. I think I need to find out if there has been any new shows that Olivia Coleman's been in because I just love everything she does. I think she's brilliant. The first show I'd ever watched of hers, if you like true crime, detective, kind of crime thriller kind of thing, it's not even I don't I don't think it was much of a thriller. It wasn't that scary or hard to watch at times, but it's called Broadchurch. I thought that was a really good show. Olivia Coleman is I don't I find she's probably my favorite actress. At least top three. She's so good. And when I watched The Bear and she just showed up magically like a guardian angel of peace, but she was great in that show. She's always great. I just, there's something about her that is just so lovely. I'm gonna water this here so it doesn't look like I'm pouring water down my pants. My bones hurt. My back, my hips, my knees. Okay, let's see what's going on here. Okay, a lot of dead roots. Here's the root situation. So there's a big primary root here that looks healthy and then everything coming off of it is deflated. Deflated and dead. So got a lot of cleaning up to do. Okay, so I wasn't like that urgent about chopping off this part. So this part, if it will focus, you can see how dry and dead it is. But then down here is very firm and it wasn't like super buried beneath the substrate. I just honestly wonder if it's going to grow. So I'm going to cut off, I'm going to cut off this part just a little bit by bit and see what I get to. Starting to see live tissue again, maybe a little bit more. So what I'd like to do is get into tree fern soil, but just keep this part suspended above the substrate because I don't want the rot creeping down here. So I wanna make sure there's airflow around the, the stem. And I don't even think I want to dome it, even though that's what will wake, you up, wake it up the quickest. Um, I'm just afraid of this like stem rot creeping downwards. The bottom is going to be nicely callous, so I don't think any rot's going to originate from here going forward, but it's a little bit of a shame that I can't dome this thing. I'm just seeing in that substrate, there was a lot of what looks like Osmocote, slow release fertilizer. And since there's no Lechuza pond in here that I can see, I think that was added. And I wonder if what like made the best freak out is maybe too much nutrients i don't know <laughs> jose's not here for me to ask um you know what i'm gonna do the little one because it's not gonna continue rooting out of here i don't think i'm pretty sure if i can manage to get it to grow something it'll just root from the new stem i don't think any of these will do anything it's not impossible but that's usually how it goes for me I'm gonna break these roots there so in terms of like shows and like content and stuff and podcasts over the last I want to say year ish year and a half I was listening to so much true crime 
Um, it started with Dateline and I was watching or listening to Sword and Scale. Um, and then I was listening to a couple episodes of Rotten Mango. And I've come to the realization, I think I've been realizing this for a while at least, that I, I think I was consuming too much true crime. Um, no matter how enjoyable I found it, and um, it was easy to put it on while I was cooking or like doing housework, like chores. I feel like it got to the point where it was not good for me. And how I realized it was because I found that, I found myself before filming, I need to be in a specific mood to film. I need to be kind of like at peace. I need to feel somewhat excited about what I'm about to film or else I just can't do it. Or it feels like the biggest chore ever. And I also need to feel somewhat inspired um, or just like positive and, positive and excited. And I found that like I had to not listen to true crime. So like while I'm getting ready, doing my makeup and stuff, I could not have true crime on. Otherwise, I end up getting a into a really bad mood right before filming and then like I don't want to film after that. So there's like very specific things I can put on while I'm um, doing my makeup which made me feel like if that's the case maybe I should just cool off on the true crime. I'm not saying true crime is bad. Um, I don't think that it was unhealthy for me but if now that I know that it has that effect on me and I don't mean it's like a I'm in a bad mood like I, I end up feeling like horrible after listening to true crime but I'm not in a mood that is conducive to filming which means like if it's making me not be able to show up as like my most positive self then it's probably not something I should have on all the time if that makes sense. I need to tag this Bessier print a Bessier F. Good luck little one Oh gosh, my aching bones. Forgetty eye, next. Oh, I forgot. I think I was in the middle of telling you about this earlier. I have a weird deja vu. This was pollinated with um, dark forgetty eye and it didn't take. It was a no-go. Hold on, this is gonna be noisy. Okay, so a lot of roots. I can chop this for sure. I'm just trying to see how much I should chop off. I usually just start with like, what's the minimum amount of roots I need for the top? And then like travel down, take that cutting first and then assess the remaining stem to see if I can get a second cut out of it. That is so much stem. Oh my gosh, I've never chopped this, I guess. I thought I did, but I guess I haven't. Okay, let's see. That'll be fine. This thing roots really quickly as well. So we're gonna chop you right, okay. Right in this vicinity. I can't really see what you're seeing. Right around, gosh, can you see? Right there. Not the most massive root system, but that's definitely enough to sustain the plant. And then, this thing can be chopped again for sure. I mean, I don't even need all of these roots to be honest, but okay, we'll chop you again. So this one is a little bit more mature than this one, but I left quite a bit of stem on there. I could chop it again, but honestly, I don't think it's worth the, the hassle. So. This one has like tons, tons of notes. I don't know if it will show up behind all of these roots, but there's a lot of stem. But this one's gonna be more juvenile. Will you fit into this? Yeah, that should fit. Okay, I honestly won't be able to fit that much substrate in here. Hopefully it'll stay put like that. I'm really gonna have to figure out a way of um, filming in here that doesn't require a full vacuum job and a mop afterwards. I can hear Doug doing like little cries downstairs. Is he okay? He does all different cries like 
you know, if you have a dog, they have like different cries that mean different things. He's doing kind of like, I need a poop cry, but it's kind of sounds like soft little sobs. Just like, <laughs> and it's really heartbreaking. So I'm, I'm going to repot. I only have, well, this, the top cutting of this and the uh, ace of spades to do, and then we're going to take him outside. Okay, so this one can go into probably, yeah. I want to try to sit it down as low as possible because forgetty eye grows up so quickly that you end up having like so much stem above the substrate that's not able to root into it because this now lives in ambient conditions. So this is probably as low as I can sit it. I like blasted through this bin of tree fern soil. Holy crap, I'm running so low. Well, I'm running to like the last quarter of this bin now. And I was pretty full when we first started. I'm about to become pretty busy, I think, with work. I don't know if, how much I've been like kind of talking about work. Not YouTube or plant stuff. It's just um, my my freelance consulting work. I have, I have multiple, I, well, I have three clients right now. It's moving so slowly, but I just have a bad feeling that like all three are gonna ramp up at the same time. I don't plan on like skipping uploads, like unless something really bad happens or something like my schedule just goes bonkers. But um, I have a bad feeling that like it's gonna just all kind of collide all at once. It might turn into at some point, one, two, three clients, four, five, five, things that aren't all full-time plus YouTube. The thing that stresses me out, I think the most about this kind of, um, this kind of work that I'm doing is that like, there's no guarantee if you even have work, like they might not have anything for you or they might have a, a pause on the project for whatever reason, because like they need to focus on something else and you can't move forward without them. You can have like five things going at the same time and be making no money and that, really does that stresses me out a lot and i'm trying to find ways to fill my time um in between that kind of regulates my my monthly income to some extent uh but it is really not stable first of all but it's also can be really alarmingly um scary in terms of how little money you can make in a month not to put off anyone from doing this I don't regret it. What everyone tells you about like projects never being on time, in my experience, this last year has been true. Anyways, that's for later me to, to worry about. I'll probably try to film that second video in tomorrow or something like that. Okay, so this one's done. This one's going back on my plant shelf. Okay, last one is the one that I think will be the most difficult and I'm the most nervous about. I'm still a little bit um, petrified of this plant, to be quite honest, because I don't think it's like an easy anthurium. We've definitely had our ups and downs. Luckily, it really likes tree fern soil. <sighs> the trouble is, the scary part is like, um, I fully plan on moving this out of my tent now after this repot and growing it either here or here. So um, I can't really like, no. If I'm cutting it though, I might have to just like pop it back in for a little bit to, to find its bearings again and then move it out. I have to get rid of all the substrate in order to see the stem to see if I could cut it. But there's so many roots. Okay, I'm gonna just time lapse this part because it's gonna take a little while. I got all this substrate off and I still can't see. Okay, I think I can see where I can make the cut. I'm gonna cut the, the original stem off, the one that Amanda propagated it from. Oh, it just broke off. Well, that works too. We'll see if something, I'm pretty sure something can grow from this. 
but I accidentally snapped it there. <laughs> but maybe it will grow something from there. This little root looks, feels, yeah, it's squishy and dead. So there's that. And then this is just a lot of roots to see through. Oh, okay, I can see. Oh, okay, okay, okay. There's a lot of stem actually, which I guess is fair because I've had this for probably a year and a bit, somewhere between a year and a year and a half. Okay. Yep. I can see where I can make a cut. It's going to be almost impossible to show you before I make the cut. So I'm just going to do the cut and then show you after, but I can see an auxiliary bud here. Oh dear. Come on. Where was it again? Okay, right here. So this one has tons of roots. Do you see that auxiliary bud just poking out of that stem there? That's that's a great cut actually. And there's still this much stem. Do I do it? Yeah, I think I'm gonna do it. So I kind of held off on cutting this plant for a long time because I'm like, okay, I want to breed with it. If I cut it, I'm not going to be able to breed with it as quickly. Um, now that it's on, on catafils and it could potentially flower, this is a very dicey cut. Uh, not my best work, but I cut it there because this is a, basically a single node. You can see the axillary bud right there. I'm trying to block that light with the stem. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna end it there. <laughs> Not the video. I'm gonna end the chopping spree there. There's still tons of roots like that. Um, yeah, I feel okay about it. And as usual, I'm not going to callus because I'm too lazy. Okay, so this is the biggest pot I have. It's not even as big as I'd like it to be, but that's, that's the only thing I have. Oh gosh. We're running out of Leka. I have just enough for that plant. I think I'm going to reuse some of the old substrate because I didn't really have like root rot issues, but I probably have some like broken roots I just need to fish out. Oh, I forgot. I'm going to also cut off these little guys that are, they're just cramping my style. I think they're gonna just come off. So we're just left with like these three leaves at the front and there's a little guy in the back. And I'm actually curious because I don't think that those marks that I just showed you, that does, doesn't look like ace pox. Let me just show you the leaf again. That's not ace pox, but it's like really ugly yellowing. I don't even know if that's fungal or not, but I am very curious to see that now that I've cut those leaves off, are these going to start rapidly declining? You know, the newer, newer leaves. Because to my knowledge, that's kind of how Ace Fox operates. Like, if you leave the lowest leaf down, just like covered in Ace Fox, it's going to kind of leave the rest of the plant alone a little bit. And then once that leaf goes fully, it starts to move up. Who freaking knows? I'm kind of nervous about this. I'm just going to sprinkle some great white dry on the roots and then I'm still going to water over it with great white. don't think I have space to rehab this giant pot in my tent. We'll see how it goes. I'm gonna leave it out out in ambient conditions overnight. As you guys saw that that root system is pretty hefty. If I had like kind of cut it so much that it was like just a couple of big roots left, I would definitely get it back into my tent. But since it had such a massive root system, I'm thinking it might be okay. <laughs> so I'm gonna monitor how it looks tomorrow. And if it looks like it's declined, if it looks droopy, 
going straight back into my tent and I'll move something else out. But my goal was to eventually move this thing out. It just kept getting burnt or like trying to turn away from the light. And I just think that maybe out here it might not grow as quickly and stuff, but at least maybe it will kind of look nicer and look, look darker. I've also heard that like, and I don't know how true this is because this is just like kind of hearsay, um, but that possibly phyton could cure the ace pox. So the ace pox, um, to my knowledge, only shows up in mature specimens and mine is kind of closing in on that age. So we'll see if it starts to show up here on this plant. I, again, I don't think this is ace pox. Like you look at this leaf, this doesn't really look like ace pox. This just looks like some sort of root health issue, maybe like kind of underwatered, overwatered kind of thing. I'm also not the ace pox expert, so I'm just gonna be monitoring this very carefully. Not gonna lie, I am nervous about this because this is such a precious plant and it's moving out of the tent. <laughs> And the plants are getting so big. I don't know how I feel about it, honestly. I, like we all want our plants to get big and stuff, but then like, what is the age where we just like love a plant the most? Is it when it gets huge or do we have that feeling of like nurturing and like mother and child the most when they're like small little babies? It always feels like, growing a plant huge should be the goal because that means that the plant is healthy and it's doing what it was always intended to do. But at the same time, do we want all our plants to get that big? By the way, I'm not doing a LECA layer on this because I'm out of LECA, but also because this is not gonna sit in a reservoir that's gonna go into my propagation dome. Yeah, there was a happy medium of being able to keep a plant like quite happy, but it's not sizing up dramatically. I feel like that would be a really nice line to kind of walk on for a lot of plants. I don't know. I just think that um, when it comes to social media and there's like a competitive nature to social media, I think um, everyone's kind of clamoring to be like the best grower or have the nicest collection um, or own a certain plants. I'm not saying everyone, but like it certainly feels like that's the kind of undercurrent of the community and there's definitely a lot of FOMO going on when you're like oh maybe I should be trying this thing to size up my plant because like so and so uses such and such to size up their plants and look how massive and healthy their plants are I must be doing it wrong but there should be a normalization I think of maybe I don't want my plant to grow that big <laughs> because there's problems that arise when plants get really big, right? Like ace pox ends up on your ace or you end up with like a, a plant that has like a six foot spread and it's covered in EFN, which by the way, I said before, I was like, I have this like, not, not nostalgic, sentimental attachment to my Florida ghost that I grew from a little baby because like this whole thing that my boyfriend like sacrificed this whole afternoon to line up with me during COVID to get this plant. And um, it was like my first like uncommon plant. And I kind of held on to it for the longest time because I, I thought that he also had memories attached to this. And then the other day we were standing next to my, or like we were sitting in my guest bedroom and, and that's where the Florida ghost was. And it's freaking massive. And I was like, do you remember when we got this plant? And he's like, no, don't remember. And then I described that day and he was like, kind of rings a bell. And I was like, oh, well, I've been thinking of chopping it. And he's like, yes, can you just get rid of this thing? I hate it. It's so big. It's so sticky. And that was, that, that was all I need. That was all I needed. I just wanted to almost have like permission to get rid of this plant and kind of get rid of this plant that had very sentimental meaning to me. It felt good. I have no regrets. I chopped it into single nodes, not single nodes, like some single nodes, some two nodes. I <laughs> brought it to the shop and I just chucked it in a prop bin. I have the top that I'm gonna pot up and probably sell. And yeah, that's a prime example of a plant that got worse the more mature it got. It was the same with my Florida Beauty. I love that plant 
to bits. That was like my pride and joy as I saw it mature because I had struggled with it for a little bit. And then it did get mature. At which point I was like, I remember I posted a story on my Instagram. And I was like, I think I don't like this plant anymore. It's like, it's a bit much. I'm trying to see if this one will fit in here. It will be snug. I'm going to use the bigger one. And then so many people were like, I feel exactly the same way. Um, the same thing happened to me. Like, why are those petioles so long? And I, it felt like, okay, again, like, I have permission to not appreciate a plant as much when it's like obviously thriving and happy. It feels wrong, right? I think there are certain homes that are very conducive to growing large plants because of natural light, spatial um, freedoms. It took a few years for me to learn that like I shouldn't try to have that be the goal for every single one of my plants. Like I always knew that to be true, but then I didn't apply that thinking to aeroids. So I'd be okay with like more succulent plants being quite small and not growing that fast because they're more decorative. But when it came to aeroids, it always felt like we should be a little bit more serious about growing the aeroids. I want to free myself from that expectation. And I guess I kind of have freed myself from that expectation. I think the next step is to free myself from that expectation when it comes to anthuriums because that's one genus where I feel like I should be taking really seriously because everyone seems to be taking it so seriously. Anyways, this one's done. I am so scared. <laughs> but uh, oh, I just need to make labels. I have a comical mess to clean up after this. Uh, so much for relaxing cozy. I actually wanted so badly to just clean today and do laundry and like steam the floors and stuff, but I can't really justify doing that on a weekday. Like I feel like I, that should be a weekend thing, but then the weekend was all like gardening work. Um, so I love that I can actually just do that now that I've, I've done my work. I filmed, I actually had a nice protein packed lunch, like yogurt, hemp hearts, chia. Oh, what else was in it? Banana. I mean, that's not all protein, but it was like, oh, I had dates. It was like nice and filling. So I feel energetic, but my knees really hurt because I'm sitting on this like hardwood floor. Anyways, I cannot believe I finally chopped my ace. There's the one with like lots. No, no, no. This one is the single node. Actually, I should probably put this here. So the auxiliary bud faces out. So that's the single node one. This one has many more nodes. Oh, I also have this. I feel like it could grow something. You know what? I'm going to leave this and do it off camera. I'm just going to put it into like my little, this is what I did for my Fort Sherman Ralph Lynam. I potted it in tree fern soil in this cute little parfait cup. This one is somewhat waking up. If you can, can you see? Oh my gosh, where is it? Right here. But these little domes, they're very cute. Okay, I'm gonna end this here. I would clean up, but I literally can't move or I'm gonna knock like five things over. I'm not doing that around my camera. I hope you guys enjoyed this casual repot. If you were doing chores of your own, house chores, plant chores, let me know what you got up to because I'm nosy like that. I just like to know what people are doing when my video is playing because it's nice to know that we're all being productive together. But anyway, I hope you guys are having a wonderful weekend. I love you so much and I'll see you in the next one.